gentlemen, well, welcome you to the second to last round of XRL's Realistic League on F1 2021 as we're preparing to get underway for a race in the Netherlands here at Zandvoort, one of the tightest and most destructive races on the schedule for the XRL series. Of all the races I've gotten to broadcast here, I have never seen a race finish here with more than 12 cars. We have a full 20 car field today. I think before we get into anything, the number one thing to consider is that being able to finish today's race is of peak prime importance. If you cannot finish, well, your season may be, might as well in here. There's only one more race left in the season. That will be at Monza for the season finale next week. But today, it's Zandvoort, one of the tightest circuits on the schedule. One nice change though, we now have a full grid for the first time in about seven weeks. So we finally have two drivers in the Ferrari camp. That has been the team that's really not been bringing drivers to the track recently. Finally, we now have two Ferraris. We now have a full 20 car grid for today's race. So at least for me, I'm relatively happy to hear and see that. Top 15 fastest will advance to the next round. Also of note, for XRO Matrix, for him, it's very simple. If he can finish 7th or better today, he will automatically lock up the Drivers' Championship, regardless of whatever XRL Torpedo does. However, in the Manufacturers' Championship, it is a three-way fight. Right now, the Alphataris look like they have the advantage, but the Ferraris, now with two representatives, could potentially strike back. So could the Williams. Also, VG Bullbeast is finally back or at least had the option to come back, and he took it, but he is no longer in the Williams. They have been so successful in mid-season, he has now been relegated down to the Haas. But I've got to talk with Frisbee. He said that he feels this track is very well suited for the Haas. He thinks that the, if the Haas is going to win a race this season, it will be here. And I'd have to hope he's right, because there's only one more race left, and frankly, there's no way a Haas is going to win at Monza, which is so straightaway focused, which is one of the areas where they show their most weakness at. Other drivers out on circuit, the first one to come out today was XRL Azda in the Aston Martin, although he has already invalidated a lap. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. Oh, wow. Is that spin already? I didn't take Lawn. Uh, who is that in Sector 2? That is XRL 19, who has had a spin. Well, irregardless, we're going to go ahead, spin a lap on board with the Ferrari of B-Tech Jelebin so we can get an idea of what a full lap is here in the Ferrari at Zandvoort here in Q1 before we get too far into the session. And Jelebin sets a time, 112.706, but at the top right now in the Haas camp is Frisbee at the 112.674. BG Bullbeast, his teammate, already set a purple sector one as we see him flying through sector two right now. Overtaking anticipated to be borderline impossible today, even with DRS helps qualifying and strategy will be keen for today's event. That and of course obviously surviving to race end. Fifty-one point three one six at the end of sector two for Bull Beasts as we see an Aston Martin crossing the line. 
That will put Azda back on top, 112.612. Azda has had some very strong runs throughout the season, including a win for after crashing early on at Brazil. Had a great top five run all a few races ago at Spa Francorchamps. Well, we set some 113.434, not quite as high as we are anticipating. As we see Waddington now, he is on the run to the final corner. There's also BTEC 11. He is coming out of the final corner now. Oh, and now Waddington's around in the Williams. Waddington has had an accident, spins across the track. The Haas has to swerve to avoid him. The good news for Waddington, he will be able to get going, bring it into the pit lane. But our first accident of the day in qualifying for the Williams. Aston Martin and Davis John in the middle of a lap right now. Not committing too heavily to it considering he's not even touching the ERS. Javis John around the final corner now. He'll try and be the eighth driver to set a time. Davey Ward is on the track ahead of him, but he is starting a lap, not finishing a lap right now. And Azda has... What in the devil? Azda has crashed out. Yes, Azda has crashed out. And he's not the only one. x 19 has just crashed out as well. Two drivers who have already set lap times have just crashed out. All right, coming to the party right now is x Azda. Azda, go ahead and include your audio. What happened? How are you out already? I don't even know what happened, to be honest. The, the car literally just went. I didn't touch a curb or anything like that. So I have no idea. Well, definitely a frustrating scenario. You're not even going to advance out of the first round of qualifying. Do you think you can make... It back up through the grid though as it goes on. Uh, hopefully, as the race goes on. Uh, hopefully, uh, as this is probably a chaotic race, the is probably going to be the main thing around here, and uh, yeah, we'll just have to see and uh, hope everything goes very well. All right. Well, thanks for being willing to jump in and talk with us. A shame to see you knocked out like this. We sent an invite out to XRL19. He has not yet taken up the invite to come into the party though. Hopefully that will change, but can't force him. <coughs> Excuse me, XL Dragon in the McLaren instead of 112.947. Conga line of humiliation for the McLaren team has slowed down a little bit. McLaren has started to earn some points again, but it's come so late in the season that it looks like it may not really change all that much. When it comes to their in fate, Mr. Worson has retired in the pit lane with a 113.896. That's the slowest of the nine times set thus far. It's a very strange strategy, but he might not even be worried too much about qualifying the race very high up. Smoothie 25 in the middle of the lap right now. Round through sector two, Matrix, your championship points leader. Like I said earlier, if he can finish 7th or better today, he will lock up the title. Dragon's crashed out now! My goodness, what in the devil? I know this track is chaotic, but this is ridiculous! Frisbee now retires in the pit lane, and we're going to have to try and reach out to Dragon now. So we may not even have to worry about drivers getting knocked out due to not being able to set times. It just seems like the ability to keep the car together for a single lap is lacking in a lot of the drivers here right now. Bull Beast now goes to the top 12.2 for eight. So Haas, first and second fastest on the time sheets right now. Flavor and Winding both in the middle of laps as we speak. Five point three six three for Flavor at the end of sector one. Washington's a little bit farther up the track from him right now. As Kinsey has now come onto the circuit to begin his outlap. All right, and coming into the party is XRL Dragon. Dragon, go ahead, include your audio. Big accident in an area of the track we don't normally see DNFs at. What happened? Uh, I just got a bit greedy on the power and uh, 
Slam bam. Thank you, ma'am. All right, well, this has been an absolute conga line of humiliation for most of the year for you. Thankfully, there's only two more races left. Only one after today is over. But I do have to ask, you're not going to advance out of this round. Do you think you have a chance at all of making it into the points paying positions or even lasting to the end of the race today, considering that already four drivers have crashed out of this session? Um, as I said, I was just a little bit, uh, I was a little bit greedy out in the power. Uh, Semi a simple mistake. Um, I've run a couple GPs so far for this race thus far. I've uh, been able to take all of them to the end and uh, haven't had a finish less than the uh, top six. So I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty confident. Car, um, car feels good. And again, it was just a simple rookie mistake. All right, one last question for you. There's still the question. Are you going to be running with XRL in F1 2022 when that comes out in about two months' time? Uh, that has yet to be uh, that has yet to be determined. Um, looking for a couple uh, looking for a couple things to come out of the mouth of uh, EA before I make a decision one way or another as to whether or not I'm going to continue into the uh, 2022 season. All right, as we see, Kinsey Retro now have a spin back there in sector two. Well. Hopefully, we don't have to end up talking to you next week as potentially your last race under the XRL banner. Absolutely. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. All right. Thanks for being willing to jump in and talk with us, mate. Not a problem. All right. XRL Zola's Dragon's teammate is now making his way into the final two corners now. So while one McLaren will not advance, Zola will try and get his to advance right now. Five different drivers have retired from crash. Four drivers have retired from crash damage, and then A. Waddington and Mr. Worson. Well, now things have gotten really interesting. Zola says time. Now a lot of drivers are saying their time. Lowe is on the outside looking in with a 113.021. He needs to improve by about four tenths if he wants in right now. He's in the middle of an outlap right now. Here comes Kinsey Retro to a line. A 142, though, after he spun that lap, so he obviously is looking for something way faster, way better than that. But all 20 drivers at this point have set a time, even the ones that have crashed out. That's been the interesting part. No one's had a trouble setting a lap. The problem has just been keeping their car alive. Right now, Lowe and Kinsey need to beat Asda in 19's time of 112.612 and 112.856. That is the barrier you must beat in order to make it into the next round of qualifying right now. Everyone else, they're good. They're locked in. They're safe. The Ferrari currently qualified 13th and 20th fastest. J BTEC 11, 112.706. But again, these two, they are the only ones, question mark, all 13 other drivers, they're locked into the next round. They don't have to worry about anything thus far. Coming out of the final corner is Kinsey. Pops up in the DRS, and as he comes across the line, it will be a lap time 112.905. That's 17th best thus far. Lowe and Kinsey still need to find more time somehow if they want to go farther up. Lowe in 14th at the moment. I take that back. So Lowe has moved up to 14th, 112.733. So right now, Kinsey needs to find about three tenths in order to advance into round two of qualifying. Frisbee, Flavor, Zola have all retired. Wanton and Worsen both didn't crash out, but they just set relatively slow laps and said, look, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to go hard. And they retired early on. Lowe's invalidated that lap. But the focus, again, right now is all on this man here, Kinsey Retro. His teammate, BTEG11, is on an outlap right now, a little bit farther up the track. And I have to wonder if there's going to be an attempt by Gilebend to give Kinsey a drag. No, there is not. He's committing to his own laps. SFR Shu, who is currently second on the time, she's also come back out on circuit and wants to give it another shot, wants to give a faster lap. Out of the final corner is Kinsey, but he'll come into the pits. Low on fuel. It takes about a minute and 15 seconds to complete a lap around this circuit. 
So it takes you about 3 minutes and 45 seconds to do a full out lap, flying lap, and in lap. So for Kinsey, I think he has a chance for one or two more laps if they don't waste too much time. Ocean Lion, he now retires from the session. Collie Boy in the Red Bull is still out there, still pounding away laps, and actually gained on that prior session, that prior lap by three tenths, but he's invalidated this lap now. He'll likely come in. And now SFR Shu in the middle of his circuit now. In the Alpine. Shu, one of the containers in the Dev Series Championship, had a nasty accident earlier today at Silverstone in the Dev Race. Now he's trying to put that behind him and focus on having a good run here today for this, the realistic race, at a completely different type of track, Zandvoort. Alpine a bit slidey there in Sector 2. Comes in that short backstretch DRS straight. But even with the DRS open, you don't really get a massive amount of speed. You're only ever about 150 miles an hour at most going into the braking zone. It's a very hard, tight, right-hand 90-degree corner. Uh, Red Bull coming into the pits. That would be Collie Boy, as we expected. Shu is going to abort his lap. Bull Beast is on the lap right now, trying to improve. Move higher up the grid. BTEC Jalebin on track, and that's Kinsey Retro behind him. This might work out for Kinsey. If they time this right, Kinsey might be able to get a draft off of Jalebin down the main straightaway to try and improve his time. Kinsey needs to find three tenths in order to advance to the next round. Otherwise, he will not be able to advance. Yeah, it looks like this might be the strategy here. Ferrari can definitely see his teammate. Yep, definitely gained a toe off of Gilebin going down the straight. Will it be enough? Gilebin takes a very, very wide line in turn one. Let's Kinsey scoot on by. Bull Beast crosses the line, does not improve his time though. Backstretch DRS zone for Kenzie Retro. He's down on time. This is not looking good unless he finds a huge chunk of time here in Sector 3. He's not going to advance. He improved. He's up to 16th. He needs to take off eight hundredths of a second in order to advance. Time's up in the session. Gilebin comes into the pits and we anticipate Bull Beast will do the same shortly. Kinsey's up by over a quarter of a second. If he can maintain this, he'll make it in. the end of sector two he's up by even more over a third of a second this could make it work Kinsey might be able to squeeze in last possible moment he needs to keep it together in these final corners last breaking zone and now it's all full throttle here to the end laying on the ERS full throttle out of the final corner for Kinsey Retro and the Ferrari will he make it in the answer I believe it's a yes
Definitely giving us something to be excited about to the end. Yes, Kinsey did make it in. Davey Wart, though, fastest time in the Mercedes with a 112.122, followed by SFR Shoe in the Alpine, BG Bullbeast in the Haas, BTEC Glebin in the Ferrari, Ocean Lion 08 in the Mercedes, Frisbee in the other Haas, Collie Boy in XRO Flavor, teammates in the Red Bull can't make it in, Torpedo in the Alpha Tari Advances, as does XRO Matrix in the Alpha Male, XRO Zola in the McLaren, Kinsey Retro in his Ferrari, Smoothie 25 in the Alpine, and Jabez John in the Aston Martin. In the end, though, Six drivers do not advance, and I must have miscalculated. Extra low, because of Kinsey's great lap time, low will not advance to the next round of qualifying. Frustration for him. And then Azda, Dragon, both crashed out. We're not able to get laps in. 19 also crashed out. Also, Waddington and Mr. Worsen retired extremely early in the session. The laps they set early were not even remotely competitive enough to keep them in the running going forward. So 14 drivers will be trying to vie for 10 spots and the top 10 fastest at the end of the second session, the tires they set their fastest lap on will be the tires they have to start the race with. Right now, everyone except for SFR Shoe though seems to have the soft rubber equipped. First drive around to the circuit, Frisbee by a massive mountain. Still no one else has come out of pit lane. <coughs> and the laps are so quick and short here. This could work out very well for him. Assuming that drivers aren't coming out onto the track while he is in the middle of a flyer. Considering how sector one and sector two, and even the very first part of sector three is laid out. Lap tra uh, traffic on alternate lap settings just really, really can screw with you significantly. But still, no one else has made an attempt to come out onto the track. So he's in the middle of his flying lap now, but only one other person, SFR Shu, has now come out onto the track, and Shu is on medium tires. So very strange scenario early on in Q2. Not very many people rushing to get out onto the circuit. Frisbee 25.339. It's entirely possible that Frisbee could end up having the time that everyone needs to beat for a long period of this session. Purple Sector 2, obviously. Now we see a Red Bull. That's XRO Flavor. He has come out onto the track. But unlike Q1, there's really not much of a rush by a lot of drivers to get out on track here in Q2. Now we're seeing a Ferrari making his, ray, his way down pit lane, as is the Haas of Bull Beast. And Frisbee aborts his lap, comes to a dead stop, and then starts going again. What in the devil is he doing? Well, the 118.509 is not at all the lap time that we know that he can set. I have to wonder if maybe Frisbee is trying to just hold back and be deceptive as to what type of times they can actually get in that machine. So the focus now goes to SFR Shoe on the medium rubber in the Alpine. Right now, one of only four drivers with mediums, tires, equipped, and he's the only one on track with that rubber compound of choice. Both Ferraris, both Haas's still on circuit. Flavor crosses the line to begin his lap now. Final two corners for SFR Shoe. A little bit wide, runs over the outside curbing. Not too much of an issue. 
And coming down to the line, Shu will set a time that everyone will be going for. It will be a 112.663. I imagine we're going to see that fall very quickly because here comes the Ferrari of B-Tech, Jalebin. And Jalebin aborts his lap. Okay, so here comes Bull Beast then to get a lap in. It's also XRO Flavor, who is in the middle of a lap right now. Matrix and Torpedo both have medium tires equipped in pit lane, but neither of them made a way onto the track yet. Looking at Flavor real quickly, 50.608 at the end of Sector 2. DRS open at the line for Flavor, 112.575, and now Flavor is on top of the timesheets. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one, but it's not likely to last for long. SFR Shu is, well, he's on a cooldown lap right now, but Kinsey Retro is in the middle of a flyer. And I anticipate he does have the speed to snag the top spot. McLaren of XRO Zola, he has now come out onto the circuit. Now we're seeing a lot more crowding on track. Bullbees now goes to the top in the Haas 112.413. Spin. Alpine, I believe, has had a spin as Kinsey goes to the top. And that's SFR Shu. And that's right in front of Collie Boy and Torpedo. And Shu has been disqualified for the spin because it was right in front of the pit lane exit and it blocked other drivers. And it goes from bad to worse for SFR Shu today. Now we have a bunch of guys out, all on outlaps right now. This man here, Dave Ewart, in a relatively good position, though. Oh, as I say that, he very nearly invalidates and taps that outside wall. Dave rounding the last two corners in that Mercedes. Pops up in the DRS, laying on the ERS. He'll set time 112.201, second best thus far. All right, and coming into the party right now is SFR Shu. Shu, go ahead, include your audio. Uh, a spin and a bullcrap disqualification. What happened out there? I just hit the, hit the turbo on turn one, and it's running. And the game gave me no time to react and put it in reverse and just disqualified me. So I don't think anything today is going my luck, so... All right, well, you're starting 14th in a very full grid on a crowded track, but do you think you have a strategy or the pace to get your way into the points paying position? Um, yeah, I'm going to try a completely different strategy than probably everyone else will. But, yeah, I think I'll be happy with a top 10 finish. All right, well, I do want to say... Twice today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's hoping that doesn't happen. Thanks for being willing to jump in and talk with us, mate, and good luck to you. No worries, thank you. No way, thank you. And while we were talking, two more drivers crashed out just in that little conversation alone. Dave Ewar, who had set a good time, 112.201, he's crashed out, as has Davis John, who crashed out before he even got to set a time in this session. So it looks like we may be looking at another session where only one or two got drivers are going to get squeezed out here. So pandemonium as an inability to finish laps and keep the car alive is really wreaking havoc. Smoothie 25, ninth in the Alpine. Well, ninth on the listing, but that's not actual proper time. Now he jumps up. Well, now Frisbee jumps up to fifth, 112.619. Smoothie trying to be the eighth driver to set a time in the session. With that Renault engine, he will set a time 113.243, slowest of everyone who's set a time thus far in the session. Now your title contenders, Matrix and Torpedo, both in the middle of laps. Matrix on the softs, Torpedo on the medium tires. Torpedo. 
torpedo farther up on the circuit than Matrix is. Matrix, who has, lost, who has missed nearly a fifth of the season thus far this year, still walk, walked off with a tie championship lead very early on in the season, and he was dominating races. He got moved to a slower car and then performed even better with a worse machine. So he's the defending X2 Series champion, and he will be trying to leave here today, being the only man in XRL history to hold the championship in two different series at the exact same time. Torpedo's pulled over to let other drivers pass, so Matrix coming to the line. This should be a time that will easily get him forward. 112.116, that's second best thus far. So now focus goes to the yes, XRL Torpedo and Ocean Line, both who are on laps right now, though Torpedo did pull over. So this is not a very accurate lap time. We'll see what he actually has in the following circuit. 138.480 for Torpedo. Ocean Lion, 50.1 flat at the end of Sector 2. Now Navgain, Sector 3. His teammate Dave Ewart ran really, really wide through there earlier. Didn't crash out there, though. He crashed out a different part of the track. And Torpedo has had a spin. So it's not going good for second in the championship. And that's not going to help the Alphatari team when it comes to their manufacturer's championship bid. Ocean Line goes to the top 111.833. And because Dave had set such a good time, that squeezes Smoothie back out of the times. Only, it looks like, unless we're going to see a really big pace pickup, only nine drivers are going to be in position to advance to the next round. So it's Zola, Glebin, Smoothie, and Torpedo are the ones fighting for these final positions. Glebin on the bubble with a 12.939 in the pits right now. Zola is still out on track on mediums. Not much fuel left in that car, though, and I think he's just on a cooldown lap for all intents and purposes. Movement in the Haas pit. Well, that's just both Haases coming into the pit lane by the looks of it. Yeah, Zola's going to be coming into the pits here for sure. Smoothie, though, has already responded. But he's and he's moved up to eighth with a 12.671. So for the moment he's safer. But there's still a Ferrari and an Alpha Tari on the outside looking in at the moment. Smoothie, the only man on track. As I say that, now we see a Ferrari coming back out onto the circuit. That would be Eleven. Now we see a Haas and a Red Bull coming on as well. So that is Hollyboy and BG Bulbies. Those two are not in a very bad position, but they're Willing to go back out for whatever reason. Interesting strategy, to say the least. It's a bold strategy, Patton. Let's see how it plays out. Smoothie, though, very low on fuel. Ba almost out. He's going to be kind of coasting into pit lane. Jelebin on the outside looking in. His teammate, Kinsey Retro, barely made it into Q2. Jelebin, can he replicate? Can he barely make his way into Q3? And squeeze an Alpha Tari of XRL Torpedo out like Matrix, like, not Matrix, like Kinsey did to XRL Low. Torpedo now out on circuit. Now we're seeing Zola coming down pit lane. It looks like Kinsey's coming back out on track as well. Of note, Jelebin set his prior best lap on the medium rubber. Now he is coming to the soft tires. So in theory, he should just be able to carry significantly more speed through the corners. And that in itself should get him in. He needs to improve by about 21 hundredths. About 22 hundredths. If he wants to advance in the next round. Assuming that Zola does and Torpedo do not improve their laps. He's up by over a third of a second at the end of Sector 2. If he keeps that up, that would be good enough to get him over Zola. 
Final two corners now for the Ferrari. Up to six, 112.515. So now Frisbee and the Haas might be at risk of getting knocked out. Torpedo, Zola, both in the middle of laps right now. Torpedo's up by just a tenth at the end of sector one. Collie Boy goes to the top, 111.687. Ocean Lion retires in pit lane. No need to burn up tires or make people wait for you. Only 8th and ninth. Frisbee and Smoothie are in on medium rubber, but it, that might change. We might see them setting laps on softs, or the likes of Zola Torpedo just knock them out with laps on soft tires. Out of the final corner, AlphaTari of XRL Torpedo. It does not look like he'll be knocking a Ferrari out. Will he maybe knock an Alpina Smoothie out to get in? Yes, he does. Torpedo up to 6. Smoothie now outside. Frisbee on the bubble. How has Frisbee responded? Well, he's just retired in pit lane. So yeah, Frisbee retires in the pit lane, will not be able to respond. Flavor in, Smoothie and Zola out, Smoothie in the middle of a lap. He needs to make it stick now if he wants in. He needs to improve by about six hundredths in order to advance. Bull Beast now retires in the pit lane. Flavor, it looks like he's going to make it in once more to another appearance in Q3. And no McLarens will be starting any higher than 12th. Big oof for them. Torpedo still out on circuit. I don't think Smoothie here has what it takes to get in at the speed. I think he's probably going to abort into the pits. Nope, he'll stay out, but it's just not fast enough. No, it is! He found time in the last moments! 112.319, he is in! Didn't see that coming, but he is in! Frisbee is now out! And Frisbee, who had, was on pace for a great time, but threw the first flyer away, is now outside and will not get a chance to fight for the pole position here. And no one in the top 10 will be starting on medium rubber. Collie Boy on top with the Red Bull. Ocean Lion second in the Mercedes. Kinsey third with the Ferrari. Matrix fourth with the Alpha. Fifth is Bulbies with the Haas. Sixth is Torpedo with the Alpha Tari. Seventh, Smoothie with the Alpine. Eighth is Flavor with the Red Bull. Ninth is VTEC 11 and the other Ferrari. Those are the nine drivers that will be fighting for the pole position. All right, so here we are. Nine drivers fighting for the pole position, trying to start as high up the grid as possible to avoid any potential first lap calamity. It's a very tight track here. It'll take a while to get everything singled out. You do not want to be involved in an accident in the first lap. You definitely don't want to be involved in an accident on the first lap in the last corner because it's blind, high-speed, NASCAR-style banking. It's basically you're asking for a massive accident if someone spins near the front and comes right up into the middle of the racing line, you could see a massive multi-car accident there alone. Two Ferraris, two Red Bulls in the final round of qualifying, and this could get very interesting. They could potentially be pulling some shenanigans to try and get better starting spots the laps are very short around here you could very easily get up to three attempts without too much of an issue and that's assuming that you're just doing out lap flying lap in lap if you want to go multiple laps 
you could very easily do it. So Kenzie in the middle of a lap. He is one of three drivers on track right now with Holly Boy and XRL Torpedo. Holly Boy's already started. Torpedo now crossing the line. We get his lap. Ferrari's been looking very uh, drifty in the nose. At least Kenzie's has. VTEX looked a lot more smooth. But Kenzie, it looks like that nose likes to kind of drift around. He's constantly making micro adjustments to get it properly set up to navigate the corners here keep it on the racing line. Oh, alright. All right, and into the broad <laughs> Alright, into the broadcast booth. Uh, we welcome back XRL Ozda. Ozda, final on. round of qualifying. Shame that we don't see you here on the track for this session, but uh you've had some level of success at the circuit before. In your opinion, what is the best way to try to get a nice flying lap ripped off here? Uh, a nice flying lap, you've got to be smooth around the circuit. You can't do any jaggedy inputs. Um, Colorboy's doing that fantastically with 11, uh, 111.4, but you have to be super, super smooth. Like, I know it's really hard on controller to do that. So obviously, with wheel, you can be a lot more smoother, but like smoothness is key to be quick around here. One, one, if you, right, so this is how I, I be smooth in the same if I don't know if you guys know if you're watching the broadcast, but I do karting as well. One single movement of the wheel, and that's it. You don't want really to be doing any micro adjustments like Kenzie is, but that's probably because he's on wheel. You only do micro adjustments or, you know, getting the power too early and make the back slip, slip out. So basically, uh, the key one here is just be super, super smooth. All right. When it comes to downforce setup, what is ideal here? What kind of wing level do you want your front and rears to be, front wing and rear wing to be set at, especially when you know there's not going to be any threat of rain today? Um, I actually haven't looked at my wings. Like, I literally grabbed the set five minutes before the event, which I know is quite not very good. But um, I would say you wouldn't want a really big front and uh, like really high downforce around here because obviously you have the massive uh, pit lane straight and then obviously you have like the sweeping S's that are really really quick as well um, but then you also have the you know banked uh, herping that uh, Cully Boy is going through right now and you also have the banked corner uh, for the last corner so it's just a mix of a little bit of downforce but you mainly want um, hardly any downforce at all all right, so despite the fact that it's a very tight circuit, basically just lower the downforce, maximize your straight line speed. At least that's brought you success. Ocean Lion crosses the line, 111.662. So it's two drivers in the 111s thus far. Now we see the Alpina Smoothie 25. He comes across the line. He'll set time, 112.141. Now the only Haas, BG Bullbeast, he'll cross the line now with a 112.352. I do want to talk about Bullbeast real quickly. Outstanding season three victories for the Williams, and he has been by far the dominant Williams driver. And he got to move down to Haas in the last three races of the season now. And now he's at a track where he feels that the Haas has a massive benefit over most of the rest of the grid. Do you think Bullbeast has a chance to possibly rip out a fourth victory today? Um, it definitely is possible. Bullbeast is really, really fast. Like, over any, every league that I've seen him racing, he's been pretty quick in. Um, obviously, he's really quick in X1, um, but... You know, with the Haas, I feel like it's going to really be dependent on DRS strains because that Haas is absolutely shocking in a straight line. Um, so, if it can get in the DRS strain, it'll be totally up for a couple of overtakes or maybe even a, a fight for uh, a top three, maybe even a win. But you obviously, you've got to get through that first corner madness and also through the first lap madness as well. As obviously, tyres are cold, brakes are cold, and... Um, 
you know, some people have different awareness for others. So I think, you know, Bullbeast can be potentially maybe top five material. Um, and if he gets into the uh, the DRS strains and stuff like that, maybe top three, I'll take. All right. One more thing to ask about, and it's the corner that everyone seems to be fear here, the last final NASCAR-style banked corner. We've seen a lot of drivers get a little round through there. Sometimes it seems like their rears go around, sometimes it seems like their nose just spins to the inside independent. What exactly is causing the cars to go around in the final corner? Uh, usually it would be either touching the uh, entry curb on the outside, that would usually make you go. Also, it could be a uh, drastic movements within the wheel. So, um, I think I did this in a certain league. Uh, I can't remember which league it was specifically, but I made too many mini adjustments through that corner. And basically, I went around and I actually flipped the car. And I think I hit a Warrington as well as he was trying to go into the pit. So, I blocked the pit lane, butchered in a, a DSQ. But Mainly the thing is they're smoothness throughout that whole corner. You can't be jagged or anything like that because the back end will step out. And obviously with um, this um, track being so tight, everyone's going to be so bunched up. So if your rear goes on that corner, it's going to cause a load of DNS and wing damages. Yeah, we've seen big lap one accidents before, but lap one accidents obviously the only isn't the only killer here. I'm, I'm sure you remember it when you were contained for an X3 championship in the last game here, uh, being involved in a last <laughs> lap seven car accident that trimmed the field down to only like six finishers on the last lap here. Yeah, I do remember that, and that was out of um, going into <clears throat> excuse me, going into sector two that um, that fast right hander, I think yeah, right hander. Um, Basically, what someone probably would have done, I can't remember the clip exactly, I know that a lot of people got taken out uh, due to uh, someone's just, uh, mistake. Uh, you, would have, you would have gone wide, touched the gravel, dipped the gravel into the rear tyres, uh, put the power back on, and would have spun around and obviously uh, took out quite a few people uh, through uh, only a little tiny mistake that cost people a lot of, uh, a lot of traffic and also championship points as well. So. Um, yeah, the main key here is basically just to survive. Obviously, as you said, it's a really tight circuit. A bit like Monaco, but without all, all the massive... Oh, it's Bull Beast! Ooh, and the Haas around in turn three. He's already getting back going again, but he was out there trying to improve on his lap. Pushed a little bit too hard. Around he went. He, need, he needs to hope that he didn't take any damage in that impact. Yeah, I think he clipped his rear, from what my angle was, he clipped one of his rear wheels on a wall and that spent the car into a, a little spin. For, thankfully no damage and the wheel popped off, um, so it's good to go again. But like you said, yeah, it's basically a really tight circuit like Monaco about the walls and massive run of areas at certain corners. Um, so getting through the first lap on this is going to be key here today. Mm -hmm. Alright, one more thing. Now, I asked you this earlier, but I just want to ask again. Well, actually, no. Better question. Not very many drivers finished the race here at Zandvoort. I said at the start of the broadcast, I've never seen a race here with more than 12 finishers. At least not that I can remember. How We have a full field today. How many people do you think finish today? Um, oh, 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 that's an interesting question, that. Um, Kenzie's around as well, uh, at the same place where BG Bullby's run off. Um, I don't know, I'll say about, I'm going to set high standards and high hopes because this league is very clean. I would say about 15 finishers, I'd say. Hopefully. Wow, so you think we'd have more crash outs in qualifying than the race. Okay, that's, that, it's a bold strategy, Pat, let's see how it plays out. Oh, is that Collie Boy? No, that's not Collie Boy, sorry. That was a Flavor, he just had a spin of his own. Collie Boy crosses the line and was not able to improve on that lap, but he does still have the top time by a large margin over Ocean Lion, who is second. It's a 111.662, Collie Boy 111.431. So at the moment, it's a 2300 second swing in Collie Boy's favor. VTEC 11 comes across the line, trying to move up the grid. He does up to fifth now to 12.315. The next driver to cross the line will be BG Bulbies. He's up by three tenths at the end of sector two. 
Yeah, that uh, you know the Ferrari is looking pretty quick here. I do have to say, um, the Ferrari has very good straight line speed, and also has quite well, good downforce around here. So I'm looking for the Ferraris to get a very decent result here, especially B Jack, uh, B Tech, uh, Um So yes, Bull B goes fourth. Now Matrix begins his flyer, and now you see Flavor. He's going to begin his flyer as well. Third, less than 30 seconds left. Everyone is out on track right now. Smoothie 25 coming Down to the line. Time. He is fifth fastest right now. What can he do? Uh, I'll be surprised if he improves. And he doesn't. Oh, no, he, he does improve. Slightly. slightly, yeah. Yeah, not enough to move him up the grid. And he Cully Boy crosses the line. He does not improve either. Here comes the Mercedes of Ocean Two Lion. Two down. No one's improving. Yeah, but... Yeah, Cully and Ocean Lion do have one more shot at this. Torpedo, Torpedo just jumped five, four, up to tenths. third. So he's saying, hey, this title's not mathematically over yet. I still want one more shot at this. I don't know how that, that is, feels. That uh, is almost out of fuel right now. I think he's going to be coming into the pits. Kinsey is in the middle of the lap. He's actually up a bit on unless, time at unless, the end of Sector 2. Uh, Javelin just giving Kinsey a toe, which it looks like it's going to be. Although they haven't timed it very good. Yeah, he still went up 7th, 112.267. Now here comes the Hasa Bull Beast. Bull Beast is down time at the end of Sector 2. Did he find anything here? The answer, no, he did not. That's now Matrix, does he move up? He does. Yes, he takes the position back from Torpedo. Here comes Cully Boy. No, I'm Cully sorry, that's Flavor. Flavor oh, yeah. does not improve. Flavor does not improve. Let's see. Uh, here comes Smoothie. Move. Yep. See if going around the final corner here. Very nice corner if you get it right. Can he improve on sixth place? No, we can't. Time, yeah, yes. Uh, position, no. Yeah. Uh, Cully Boy does he improve. He doesn't. Nah, uh, I think Collie Boy burned Lion. off the best off of those tires, and yeah. Ocean Lion's going to abort. So yeah, Collie Boy. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so Collie Boy is your pole sitter. So a great job on his part, putting the Red Bull on the front row in the number one position. It's been a great season, and well, the latter half of the season has been absolutely fantastic for the Red Bull camp. Yeah, I do have to agree. I mean, Collie Boy, I've uh, messaged him personally and I've seen massive improvement um, with him in this league and also X3 as well. So, And also Flavor. I mean, look how quick he is now compared to you know what we saw in the start of the season where he's getting lapped three times. Now he's moved to wheel and honestly, it's like a whole different person. So, um, yeah, but I'm going to sign off here, get ready for the race, get focused and... Um, uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll speak to you after the race, not um, in the middle All of right, it. All right, thank you very much, Azza, for being willing to jump in and kind of give us some viewpoints of this track and this race from a driver's perspective, and we wish you good luck in the event. Thank you. So now it's about a five-minute wait until we get into the start of the race itself. Actually, relatively short Q1 and Q3 means that we'll be starting this race a little bit earlier than normal. So real quickly, let's go ahead and look at the championship stands as they are with only two races left. So in the Manufacturers Championship, 54 points up for grabs at the bottom. Mercedes still have not yet gotten 100 points. They are stuck at 96. They need four more points in order to break into the 100-point gap. Ninth is Red Bull with 153 points. Level 6 Vistian and XO Flavor have been bringing them up, but they've been rebounding well late in the season. The problem has just come so late that the gap they have to the rest of the grid has not been great. Eighth is Haas with 165 points. I don't think they're going to leave here with that. I think they'll probably leave here with more points. Seventh is McLaren, 186.6. Is Alpine with 207. Fifth is Alfa Romeo with 236. Fourth is Aston Martin with 243. Third is Williams with 301. Second is Ferrari with 307. First is Alfa Tari, 348 points. Right now, Ferrari and then very outside Williams. Alfa Tari would need to lose every point, and Williams would have to maximize every point for these last two races in order to take the Manufacturers Championship back. Not quite as stringent for Ferrari, but it's very similar to them. They need to maximize everything in these last two races in order to get a shot at the Constructors' Championship. 
In the Drivers' Championship, 20th is XRL Young with 26 points. Frisbee has slipped to 19th with only 52 points. 18th Level 6 Beast has 53. 17th XRL Oz has 54 points. 16th Ocean Lion has 60. 15th BD Bull Beast has 62 points. 14th Mr. Worsen has 64 points. 13th is Fizzy with 69. 12th is XRL Low with 77. 11th is Dragon with 90 points. Dragon has slipped out of the top 10 points very late in the season. He needs to turn this around now. This has just been an absolute horrible latter half of the season for him. 10th, Gabo, 367.20 with 90 points. 9th is XRL Jigsaw with 91. Flavor has hit 100 points this season. Eight, he has put him 8th. 7th is A. Winton. He has 108 points. 6th is XRL Zola with 130. That brings him into a tie with Gabe's Tom for 5th, 138. 4th is Ryan Hurricane with 167 points. 3rd is Smoothie, 25 with 177. 2nd is XRL Torpedo with 243. And 1st is XRL Matrix with 290 points. It's very simple for Tor for Matrix. If he can walk out of here with seven points, he will lock up the championship by default. He can basically the this what I'm un, what I've heard and understood. If he can walk out of here with seven points today, he will win the title. So finishing, you know, seventh or better should put him in a great scenario today. And that's just assuming that Torpedo maxes out fastest lap point and the race win today. And Torpedo not looking forward to today's race very much. Matrix is neither, but if Torpedo can't storm today. It kind of doesn't matter. Real quickly, we go ahead and look at the lineup as it is right now. As we know, everyone in the top 10 will be starting on worn soft tires, but behind that, Mr. Worsen and A. Wyatton starting 19th and 20th, starting on mediums. Dragon 18th will be starting on softs. 15th, 16th, 17th, Asda Low, and 19th, they will all be starting on medium rubber. SFR Shoe, Gabe is down next to Ozola, 12th, 13th, 14th, they'll be starting on softs. Frisbee in 11th will be starting on medium tires. It'll be very interesting how this goes, because the top 10 should theoretically have a great start, but again, it's a very short run from the start-finish line to a hairpin first quarter, and the track is very tight. doesn't ever really open up until you get back to the straightaway again. And then the straightaway itself is relatively short. Lap, for, lap one accidents will be very, very big, and you need if it happens, you need to do whatever you can to avoid letting that kind of scenario occur. Should be getting underway here in about two to three minutes. Here we are, preparing to get onto the track now. Final 30-second countdown. 54 points still up for grabs in the Drivers' Championship. 108 still up for grabs in the Manufacturers. But, of course, realism has to play into effect as well. You have to take that in consideration. That's why I've not been talking about gaps is quite that massive when it comes to the Manufacturers' Championship. All right. Looking onto the circuit. Four lights, five lights. It's lights out, away we go, and no one on the front row got a great start. It's Matrix, who's already moved up into the second position, looking at the inside, getting this causes a stack up behind, two, three, wide, further back in the grid, as chaos in the back, and right on the back, that's Matrix. Matrix is around, a Red Bull's around, Flavor's around, a massive flap one accident has taken and struck here. And Matrix, your championship points leader, is one of the men involved. His title rival is now up in third. Well, 
that was um that was a thing I did see that coming under the virtual safety card and BTEC Jalebind also has damage to his Ferrari as well or maybe not I don't know oh but no Zola I think does chaos throughout the grid and Matrix, who had an amazing lap one, immediately plummets down the order, and Flavor taking out lap one of the event. Lowe has recovered already from his poor qualifying and has navigated his way through the cast to get up to ninth, but under the VSC, we really don't have a good idea of where everyone's probably going to file out because we don't know how much damage some of these drivers have. Mercedes of Dave Ewart, he is going to come into the pits to repair damage. And farther back down the order, that's SFR Shu. He'll come in. Azza has to come in. Dave Ewart, Jabe is John. He's coming in. Matrix obviously will be coming in. Worsen has just had a spin of his own under the safety car. And he needs to try and navigate his way in. All right, coming to the party now is XRL Flavor. Flavor, go ahead and include your audio. Gigantic accident after a great run in qualifying. What happened there? I had a really good start, if I'm honest. Um, just watching it down replay. I have a really good start. I keep the position just about. Um, off the start. And then I get up to sixth, fifth. And then fifth, and then I'm just get out of left foot. And Matrix or someone swings back in onto the track and just in front of me. I have no chance. Absolutely no chance. But I was up to about fifth, so it was a great start for me. I'm disappointed. Um, it is what it is, but oh my god, this is a good track for me. This. Maybe looking at a good, right, well, you're good, good top five, if not a podium, with no penalties, maybe. And, Getting clean man, and, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. He just swung back in. It's, it's, it's a car in front of him, and he just swung back in from the, the wall and just come back on the track. Chance. Just unfortunate. It's just one of those things, but I'm so disappointed because it was a good track and uh, a good finish, a uh, well, good performance, really, which is what I'm all about. So, yeah, a little bit disappointed for my list. All right, well. Shame to see you knocked out like this, Flavor. There is still one race left for you to put up another great finish, and hopefully your teammate, Callie Boy, can bring home a good finish as well today. Thanks for yeah, jumping in, mate. Okay, no worries. I mean, there's one great saving great and that's just nothing I could do about it. It wasn't nothing I did. You know, it's, uh, it's just what it is. Uh, cheers, pal. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, now I want to talk to Frisbee. Uh, Frisbee, go ahead and include your audio. Big accident early on. We're already under another safety car. We've not. We've lost three drivers and three left. Frisbee, go ahead and include your audio. Accident right after the VSC ended. What happened? Uh, I think Bullby's tried to overtake Kenzie. And then Kenzie moved, and Bullby's got in the grass and spun, killed Kenzie, and then killed me. <laughs> I had nowhere to go, so I just got unlucky. Yeah, you can say that again. That this was the last race basically felt that you had any shot of winning and now you're out and your teammate Bull Beast is dead last on circuit one last race Monza and we don't anticipate much for you overall how would you rate your season experience in the Haas from <laughs> season start to now shocking <laughs> pretty bad well I think next game would be a lot better because the car should be a lot closer and the Haas shouldn't well the slowest car shouldn't be as bad Alright, well, we'll definitely see how that goes. I do want to say thanks for being willing to jump in, mate. It's a shame to see you out like this so early. Oh my goodness, it keeps going! SFR Shu has now had an accident of his own out of the final corner. Although his car is still running, he will be able to scoot it into pit lane. But the chaos continues. Three DNFs within the first three laps of the event. But at the front, Collie Boy leads with Ocean Lion second stalking him and DRS has now been enabled so we may see a Mercedes versus Red Bull fight here at Zandvoort very shortly. 
Third is XRL Torpedo, but he's a good two seconds off of this battle for a lead right now. Also, a little bit farther back, BTEC Kulebin has lost touch with Low and has let him fun, fall under threat to Zola, who is in seventh spot right now. Dragon has had a relatively good start. He is running ninth at the moment. Ocean Line did not have a good run out of the final corner for sure, and it actually let Collie Boy open the gap on him down the straight, despite the fact that the Mercedes would have had DRS. So Ocean Line does seem to be weak in Sector 3 and makes up most of his time around the rest of the circuit. So now the field's a lot more spread out, and frankly, there's a high risk that we see the likes of Bull Beast or SFR Shu going a lap down sooner rather than later today. Azza now just set the fastest lap of the day, 115.695. Now those times will naturally drop as the fuel continues to burn off. Yellow flag, Sector 3, game is done! Oh, and there's nowhere for Bull Beast to go, and he slams right into him! And Bull Beast and Jameis John crashed out out of the final corner, and it's out! Yellow flag finally out for good! And now we're already down to 15 cars. We've lost cars at a rate of a car a lap today. Good bloody God. Good God. All right, coming into the party now is BG Bulbies. Bulbies, go ahead and include your audio. Uh, what happened? From my angle, I was right on board with you. Couldn't even see what happened, but what happened from your perspective? Oh, wait, Bull Beast, I think, is one of the guys who doesn't have a mic. All right, well, if you want to write down or type up what you want to say and send it to me, that's fine, and I'll read it aloud. Uh, Callie Boy has now caught the pace car. Torpedo, 19, and Zola all pitted. Azda now gets a penalty for speeding under the safe for a drive through penalty for speeding under the safety car, so he'll have to serve that when we go back green. Bull Beast says he did not see the car because he was fighting with the Ferrari of Kinsey Retro. Yeah, that seems to check out. Nasty impact, no Haas finishing. It's a tragedy to see you knocked out like that, Bull Beast. It's a shame. Indeed. Well, one more race left. That's Monza next week. Do you have any anticipations or hopes for the finale at Monza? <coughs> Excuse me. I have hopes. All right, well, sometimes you just need to have high, high hopes for the living. All right, I do want to say, Bull Beast, thanks for being willing to jump in and talk with us. It's a shame to see both of the hosses out so early today. As we are under the full course safety car, two VSCs in a full course safety car, five cars out in the first five laps alone. And right now, the field's just trying to gather up. Uh, Zola will be the next one to catch the rear of the grid. And now, XRL19, he comes out of the final corner. He'll catch the rear of the grid now. Mr. Worsen running in 11th. As he now tries to catch the back. Looks like he will catch near the end of this lap. Though for SFR Shu, it's going to be really difficult. He's still 11 seconds out. From Azza alone, and Azza still has yet to catch the back of the grid. Azza also has to serve a drive through penalty when we go green again. So that's going to just further hurt Azza's time. Although that might have a small benefit in Azza's favor because that means he'll be turning a lot of laps on a relatively clean track with no cars around to fight with. And with relatively fresh rubber, fresh mediums for Azza, this, it could be a small benefit, not a massive one. He is still overall losing a lot of time, but it could be a small benefit in some ways. Kenzie Red 13th now catches the rear of the grid. Azza still another seven and a half seconds out from Kinsey. He's back there in 14th spot. But due to all this, uh, the likes of SFR Shu, who is about to go a lap down, he will actually be able to catch right back up to the back of the grid. Race isn't over for him yet. As Azza now finally catches the rear of the field there. SFR Shu rushing to catch them now. And we should be going green in a lap or two. In fact, I think we're going to go green this 
No, we're not going to read this lap, apparently. Curses. But at the front, Collie Boy Ocean Line. Torpedo was ranked third, but he elected to come in, throw on medium tires as it buried him back in the eighth position. Matrix, who was involved in that massive lap one accident, has only made his way up to 12th thus far, but he is still running. And again, Matrix only needs to walk out of here with a 27 point lead over Dra over Torpedo to lock up the title. And that's assuming it, so for Matrix, if Torpedo doesn't win or finish second, yeah, Matrix still has this championship won by default. In the manufacturer's fight, both Ferraris are still here. Both Williams are still here. Both Alpha Taris are still here. And that could go anyway. But Kenzie Retro in the Ferrari camp is not in the points paying positions right now. So obviously things could be going a little bit better for them. So the entire field gathered up. Now 15 cars left. After a chaotic first five laps of this day, Christ alive. Good thing we started a little bit early, because if not, uh, this will probably end up being one of the longer races we have, considering we had two VSCs in the first four in the first three laps, and then a full course safety car starting on lap five, going into lap eight. We'll be going green on lap nine, though. Now, assuming no crazy mimetic, mimetic stuff happens, it does not look like we'll be continuing the rate of one car DNFing every lap of the event. If that did happen, though, that would be absolutely hilarious. Lap 21, race is over because no one's left. That's not going to happen now, though, mathematically speaking. But uh, numerically, at the rate that the cars are falling out, it's not looking great at the moment. Hopefully, get some nice green running and without instance and we can keep going for a bit also just that's just talking about the guys who have crashed out and been knocked out there's been at least three guys i've seen who've taken damage and have just not been able to do anything all right coming to the green flag now everyone came out of the final corner alive btech 11 pitted smoothie going for a move on ocean lion for second alpine versus mercedes out of the first corner drag race for second Smoothie's not going to fight too hard, so Ocean Lion holds on to the position. Low, who started outside of the top 10, but had a great initial start avoiding early chaos, is already up in the fourth on medium tires. Dragon is in fifth on Sauce, having to fight with Waddington. Waddington pulls out of it. Torpedo, worse than fighting for position. Azza not making his drive through penalty taking his drive through penalty yet but we'll likely see him take that sooner rather than later as 19 and Waddington in the Williams camp fighting for position between teammates 19 on fresher tires Waddington started higher in the event well higher before the tires I should say before they started changing tires Zola fighting for ninth last of the points paying positions are ninth and tenth and that's Matrix Worsen's teammate behind him And everyone gets through. Okay, so we should be green for a little bit now, hopefully. Low just kind of hanging out behind Smoothie right now, knowing that the top three's tires will be falling off and will go in his favor. Dragon has had an uncharacteristically strong start to today's race, ranked fifth very early in the event. That's great news for him. 19 hanging out in six, Waddington in seven, still behind his teammate. Zola continues to stalk Worsen, trying to find a way past. But without DRS, it's very difficult to pass here. Even way back in the day, that's Ocean Lion who has spun out of second place. And that car might be beat. No, he's got it going. He's got it going now. But from second to second to last, and this is perfect for Collie Boy because now he has a 2.7 second lead over Smoothie in the second spot. So um, this is going very well for one of the Red Bulls, at least. The other XO flavor didn't even make it through three corners. But and there we are. DRS has been enabled. Torpedo fighting with Waddington for position. Looking around the outside. 
sends it in, can't keep it together, but has good exit, not good enough, can't get ahead of the Williams. And Torpedo is fighting to try and get at least the Manufacturer's Championship locked up because as long as Matrix is still continuing to run and Torpedo's not in the top two positions, Driver's title is not in his fight. Right now he's just trying to win Manufacturer's Championship for the AlphaTauri team. Matrix continues to put pressure on Zola as Zola is fighting with Matrix's teammate Worsen. DRS on this back straightaway. This will be Zola's best chance to try and get by the Alpha Romeo until they get to the main straightaway. Worsen, though, has the inside line. Zola into the dirt, runs wide. He will complete the pass, and now Matrix is held up by his teammate. Oh, and Matrix overtaken on the outside by SFR Shu, who's making his way back up through the grid. After instance earlier, Matrix really backs out of it aggressively. Now Kenzie has a chance to maybe go after the championship leader. He's not able to commit to it, though. Move came too late and ended up sacrificing his run in the following bit. Ocean Lion paying back there in 13th. Now Shu has to figure out his way by the Alfa Romeo. Not going as smoothly as he'd want. Matrix absolutely sends it on Shu. I don't know what in the world he was thinking there. And Shu is being very aggressive on Worsen. Side by side in sector one. You don't want to be side by side through this part of the track. And he makes it stick anyway. Forces his way by in a part of the track you don't normally race at. And now Matrix has to do the same to his teammate. How aggressively is Worsen fight back? Not that aggressively. Worsen now out of the points. Now it's Kinsey's turn to tackle the Alfa Romeo ahead. Torpedo, Waddington, this time Torpedo has DRS on the outside. He's farther ahead of the Williams, keeps him pinched down. Still side by side. Drag race for a position of six on the run down to turn three. And Torpedo shoots ahead. Waddington's just not willing to give up, but he can't really fight back. Unless you really want to be aggressive through there. Waddington does want to maintain the aggressiveness. 19 gets by Dragon farther up the road. As Dragon's had a bit of a hiccup. Again, this is a fight for the Manufacturer's Championship here. Torpedo definitely faster than Waddington, but just not able to complete the overtake anywhere around the circuit as Waddington continues to deny him the inside line going into one. And while Torpedo is basically, even, Torpedo's Alphatari is even with the Williams everywhere except for acceleration, it kind of doesn't matter right now because this circuit, you only have one real over acceleration zone of importance. Torpedo, yeah, he's gonna have a slight acceleration advantage in the second DRS straight, but you don't really get beyond 155 through there. All right, here it comes down the straight. Wyden again defends the inside. Torpedo's like, fine, I'll take the outside. This time he'll complete the overtake. And Waddington says, no, you won't, because he still denies the Alphatari the inside, but this time Torpedo has a better exit. He does move up at the six for good now. And now it will be clean track ahead. The next car up by about three and a half seconds is Dragon, who is on soft tires that are fading away. Dragon's lost position to XRL 19 farther up. Of no, also Low has closed in on Smoothie for second spot. And Smoothie seems to be stuck in second, was third earlier, but now it's second on pace. He can't seem to close the gap in by any significant amount on Collie Boy, who is leading right now. Zola has a possible shot at Waddington, but he needs to make it fast because SFR Shoe behind is coming with speed. About a fifth of the way through the race. Well, almost a fifth of the way through the race right now. And a fifth of the cars, that's, a quarter of the cars that started are out already. 
But since the restart, we have stayed clean and green. Everyone who's restarted is still on track. Zola looking to the outside of Waddington. The McLaren agreed to be a much stronger car, possibly the best car in the grid, when you also weigh driver performance as well. Well, driver pace as well, but Zola and Dragon have struggled to finish races in positions that they've had the, posi the pace to earn. And Shu is right behind this group, as is Matrix. Watching that battle, just kind of, you know, letting the visuals do the talking, but then Zola absolutely loses it. And now Azza trying to get back into the points paint position. Very aggressive on Zola right now. These two had it coming together at Spa. Zola's really not been happy with Azza's driving performance. Azza's not been happy with Zola's officiating. And these two have somehow found each other on track again. Zola trying to pull away from the Aston Martin. It's just not working out as well as he anticipated it to. This means that Shu is now the one who is closing on Waddington for 7th. Man, Azda right, behind, right under that rear wing. Shu behind Waddington can't do anything. This fight is really the most active one on the track. Azda within a third of a second of the McLaren running in the draft. Should be an easy DRS overtake. How aggressively does the McLaren defend? Not that aggressively whatsoever. Azza takes the inside line, forces Zola to run the outside. Zola, just, he's fighting back. He has better acceleration on the outside line. Make a little bit of contact. Zola sends it. That's aggressive. It's a bit too aggressive, but he bullies Azza back out of the way. Zola back ahead of Azza. Now Levin is there. What's the piece of this again? Azda, Zola taking alternate lines in sector two here. They're side by side. Azda trying to drag race him, do it through a DRS straight away. This could be it. This could be all that Azda needs. Yes, he's by. Shu still can't get by Wyington, and Matrix is now there behind them. Oh, Shu runs right in the back of Wyington as Wyington gets really aggressive on the brakes in that turn one hairpin. And Zola tries to get back by Ozdebel. It doesn't leave him out for attack by Jelevin. Kinsey has now caught this battle for seven. He wants to turn the menage a trois into a four-way fight as Shu continues to struggle to make any headway against the Williams of A. Waddington. Ooh, big twitch by Shu. Here comes Matrix now on the inside of the Alpine. Neck and neck, drag race. Shu has the advantage though. Matrix misses the apex of the fallen corner. Now Kinsey 
closes up behind the Alfa Romeo. But in the process, Shu has lost touch with Waddington a bit. Now he'll close back in without a doubt in the DRS here. But it sort of doesn't matter because, yeah, you can close back in the DRS, but so what? You can't actually overtake unless you're right underneath the rear wing of that Williams, it would appear. Zola doesn't want to let Asta go, and he has DRS. He's using it though more as a defense against Kleben. Well, now he looks to the outside of Asta, sends it on the outside of Asta, side by side. Asta still has the position. Zola a bit better on acceleration, but Asta blocks the lane, the primary racing lane that Zola was using. And now Ocean Line is there as well. So for our last four positions on track, a very active four-way fight, and then an active four-way fight for the last four points paying positions on track as well. Also, Lowe has caught Smoothie now for second. And we may see an overtake for the second spot very shortly here. Shu trying to make a dive, goes around the outside of the Williams. No contact, and they'll stay in that order for a little bit longer. Lowe has DRS on the Alpina Smoothie for second, but can't get alongside of him. Torpedo has also caught Dragon for fifth. But the real interest here, Shu on Waddington for seventh and eighth. Waddington defends the extreme inside. Shu looks to the outside. The Alpine just does not have what it takes. Or does it? Yes, open opportunity. He's on the outside. Drag race can't hold it side by side with him, though, by the time they get into three. And BTEC 11 pits out of 15th posi 14th position. Tires that he's been on. Too badly worn. He wants new rubber. And with that in mind, that means that the leaders will likely be pitting sooner rather than later, the leaders being the top two, to get off of their very worn soft tires. Shu, very aggressive on Waddington right now. Shu really throwing it in. Oh, and Shu's around! And that's right in front of your points leader, Matrix, and Matrix barely avoids as his Kinsey Retro, and Shu has to get back going again. He'll now fall back out of the points paying positions. Matrix probably has his heart in his throat right now. He's in eighth. If he can finish seventh, that would be perfect for his championship hopes. At the front, Lowe continues to stalk Smoothie, but cannot get by him. Same with Torpedo on Dragon for fifth. Torpedo very aggressive on Dragon. Well, at least it looks like he's very aggressive, but it also may be that Dragon's tires have fallen off so much. Also, as they look at the telemetry, Dragon is still trying to fuel safe to the end of this race. And as I go down the grid, I think Dragon is the only one still in fuel conservation mode. Yes, he is. Everyone else is good on fuel to the end, so Dragon's still trying to save gas. No one else in that same position right now. Farther back, there's this bell. Zola now caught behind a car again, but this time it's SFR Shu for 12th. As Azda is just prancing away like a la la pony. Smoothie pitting out of the second spot now, and this promotes Low up into second. But he's six and a half seconds out of Collie Boy, and right now it seems like Collie Boy in the Red Bull has this race well under control. Matrix trying to make something happen on Waddington now. Nothing yet. Kenzie continues to hang out at the back of this fight. Yellow flag, and that's Asda! And Asda has had an accident. Safety car is out. Coming into the party now is XR Asda. Asda, gigantic accident there. Coming out of three. What happened this time?
Okay, apparently it's not going through. Uh, Azda, can you hear us? No, I do not think so. Well, our race leader, Colleyway, will take advantage of this and pit now to get off the very worn soft tires. Perfectly timed instant for him. Lowe will pit out second, 19 in third position. He will stay out a little bit longer, as will Torpedo in fourth. Dragon pits out of fifth, sixth place, Wellington. I imagine he'll be pitting as well. Yep, Azza is not going to be able to talk with us, it seems. Now we're down to 14 cars for Jaleben. This is great, though, because now Jaleben can keep on the lead lap, and he's on relatively fresh rubber as well, so this could go very well for him. Drivers throughout the entire grid pitting. Kinsey, interestingly enough, chose not to pit. Dragon did pit, and he is now falling back to ninth, but still well ahead of his teammate right now. Shu did not pit. He's on very worn softs. I'm honestly shocked he didn't pit. Ocean Lion in 11th. He has not pitted. Worsen's pitted. Zola, he's completed a stop. He is on fresh softs in 11. Back there in 14th. This will be a long safety car because how spread out the field is. Collar Boy now third on soft rubber. And Low now sixth on soft on fresh medium rubber. Now we're just running under the safety car. Waddington now making his stop. And they're throwing on hard rubber. So for Waddington, they are betting on taking this set of tires to the end of the race. seconds out from the rear of Waddington and then retech you up in about another three and a half out as I say that it looks like we should be going green lap 25 because Worsen's just about to catch the rear of the grid here so 19 and Torpedo now inherit the race lead but they're on very worn medium tires while third place Callboy is on fresh softs but those tires for everyone in the top four will not last in low and fifth is on fresh mediums I don't have a lot of confidence in those tires making it to the end either. There's the word, officially safety car coming in this lap. 14 cars will be taking the green flag on lap 25, just a little bit more than a third of the way through the race. Farther back, Jalebin looks to the inside of Worsen, but everyone's relatively single file as they take their way into turn three there. Oh, and Ocean lies around and into the outside wall. And Lion, who's been one of the faster drivers earlier today, is around for the second time. The good news, he'll still be able to continue. The bad news, this will likely trap him a lap down. Callaway Boy has now gotten away from Matrix. He is hounding Torpedo for a second spot. He wants to put that Red Bull back into the race lead where he believes it belongs and where he's shown it's belonged most of the day. Oh, big twitch though. That's gonna leave him open to attack. Matrix fighting back. So 
Callaway Boy now showing a little bit of weakness when he's out of clean air. He needs to get back within DRS range of the two leaders. He's still within it right now. Torpedo, though, closer to 19. And now, Callaway Boy closing in on both of them once more. No DRS this lap. We'll see DRS engage the lap after this in about two laps. Well, about a lap and a bit more, realistically. 19 and Torpedo take radically different lines coming out of the final corner. And look at that AlphaTauri closing, barreling down on that Williams. He looks around the outside. Can he make it sick? No. In fact, all he does is just leave himself up in the Collie Boy. Drag race for second. Torpedo has it. Collie Boy still wants it. Torpedo in second. He needs to be winning this race to keep his title hopes alive. But with Matrix running fourth, that kind of doesn't mean anything right now. Matrix has recovered from a lap one exit to get back into fourth position right now. And he honestly could still walk out here with this win depending on how this race goes. 19 just kind of tiptoeing away from Torpedo a bit as Collie Boy is putting immense pressure on the AlphaTauri. Ocean Line has made it into the pits. Torpedo just barely staying ahead of Collie Boy, but when DRS engages, it's inevitable that the Red Bull will just walk away. DRS now been enabled. Does this continue, this five-way fight, full three-way fight, and then five-way from what factored Matrix and Low for the win continues to be the big factor. Ooh, big twitch by Kinsey back there in six. And even farther behind that, Smoothie is holding up the McLarens of Dragon and Zola. Zola is Kai's teammate. He wants to get by his teammate. Been another strange event, kind of like what we saw at Spa, where Dragon had been the one outpacing Zola most of the day. And that's basically been the way most of this race has gone as well. I don't think Zola takes favorably to that. Zola wants to be the number one driver on that team. He's like, after all, I've been the one earning most of the points this season for this organization. Collie Boy had a run on Torpedo, but backed out of it. He'll wait until he gets DRS down the main straight to try and power by him. Problem with that, though, is that Torpedo has DRS that he can get off to Williams. This will be an interesting fight for the lead here and for second. 19 leads. Torpedo has DRS on him. Collie Boy has DRS on both of them. 19 defends the inside. Torpedo doesn't care. He'll hold the outside line. 19 sends it on the inside. Torpedo crossover on corner one exit. Drag race side by side for a lead into three. 19 has the position and will hold it. Torpedo still sticking with it on the outside. Can't keep it there. And Collie Boy thinks better of it. He'll like he'll be like, okay, I'll let you two battle it out for a bit. The problem though for Collie Boy is that the longer he stays behind these two, the worse and worse. It's gonna burn up his front tires. He needs to get by them ideally sooner rather than later. Ocean Lion is just at the fastest lap out there by himself on the racetrack, so good job on him at least. 19 continues to hold up Torpedo and Collie Boy. Ooh, big twitch by the Red Bull, and that will bring Matrix back into play. And Matrix is on tires worse than the two leaders, and he just does not seem to care whatsoever. Torpedo once again run on 19. 19 defends the inside a little bit less aggressively. Torpedo sends it on the outside. This time, 19 is going to intentionally keep there from being any sort of crossover. Contact, they're still side by side for the lead. Torpedo just really wants to get by. He's not happy with how this has gone. And behind, that's Jelevin who has spun out of the first corner. And now Lowe is playing Matrix under threat as Zola has gotten by Dragon. And now Shu wants to get by the McLaren as well. Contact. Dragon somehow keeps it alive. Now worse and steams by him on the outside. Turns down on two of the McLaren. McLaren does not care for that. He'll bully him back out of the way. 
No one's been able to get by the Williams of 19 thus far. Collie Boy has better tires in the two ahead, but can't do anything. Torpedo has enough DRS to keep the Red Bull behind. Final corner once more. Gaps way more in the Williams' favor again. Oh, incident, Zola. And he's not the only one. Kinsey, Retro, and Zola have had simultaneous spins come into the last corner. Did Kinsey just beat the car? No, he's not. But he will get back underway, and Matrix has just gotten overtaken by Low. So he's not going to be happy about that. So for the AlphaTauri Team Championship, at least, it's looking relatively good because they're running second and fourth, while Williams are running first and tenth. And Zola's off again. This time in turn one. Callie Boy sees a run on Torpedo. He commits, can't make it stick though. He needs to get by sooner because his tires are dying and he doesn't want to end up getting stuck on the exact same strategy, tire strategy that the guys ahead are at because then you'll never get by. Ooh, Torpedo ran wide there down the straight. They both have DRS, DRS drag race. Torpedo has the lane of choice though. So Callie Boy holds on. Twitched by the Red Bull. Torpedo a little closer to 19 than he was last lap. But again, it doesn't matter because 19 can just completely bomb turn one and force Torpedo to get knocked off the racing line and he'll still hold the lead. There's nowhere else he can really get by. Torpedo in the worst tire scenario, I think, of everyone in the top three. And here comes Collie Boy. He again gets sees a run, but every time he tries to go for it, all it does is just leave him open to attack from behind from low. And low is on medium tires that are the same life, life as Collie's tires. So as this goes on, the battle goes more and more in low's favor. Closer torpedo than torpedo seems to be able to get to 19. So I think this battle is basically gone away. And due to the yellow flag, it looks like 19 is now going to be fighting with low for this race win, all based on how strategy and pit stops fall. A little bit of a slide by Collier Boy, so his tires are definitely now suffering. Right on board with low and fourth. As you can see, Collie Boy really hammering Torpedo around the circuit. Off track, that's Mr. Worsen. No damage, but he is well off the circuit there. This will likely trap him, maybe even a lap down. He cannot seem to figure out how to get out of there properly. Now he's underway, but he's gonna fall to 13th, might even fall to 14th. For a lead once again. Gap between first and second is about the same as it has been for a while. And while we know the AlphaTauri is going to be better than the Williams in acceleration, that seems to be the only area it has. 19 just doesn't have to worry about it. He holds the inside line, then runs Torpedo off lane every single time. Contact between second and third. There's nothing the AlphaTauri can do to get by the Williams.
Williams, and then an Alphatari pair of Alphatari sandwiching a Red Bull. Callie Boy really wants out of the scenario. He knows he can overtake 19. He's sure of it, but he can't get by the Alphatari. Mercedes, and then three Honda-powered cars in the top four, and then a Ferrari engine in fifth, and an Alpine engine, well, Renault Alpine engine in sixth. Torpedo even closer to 19 this time than before. 19 defends the inside. Torpedo storms around the outside. 19 again doesn't care. He just blows the first corner to keep... Oh, and he's around! And 19's around! And his own strategy has got to get some... Oh, and Dragon's into the wall! And 19, for whatever reason, thought it was fine to cut right back onto the track. And Dragon ended up swerving to avoid him, hit the inside wall. And now both of their cars are damaged. Now 19 slams to the side of Shu. In the aftermath! What in the devil was that? Well, you can't just blow the corner every single lap, lap after lap like that. You eventually will end up causing something to happen. I don't think anyone anticipated that to be the result, but it is what happens. Shockingly, Dragon and 19 are still running, but we are under a full course safety car, and for likes of Zola, Kinsey, Retro, Ocean Lion, and Mr. Worsen, this is great. They get to come in, throw on new rubber, and stay on the lead lap. For Torpedo, this is decently good. He now has the race lead. Collie Boy is still second behind him. Low is third, and now Matrix is back in the fourth. Who in the who of the leaders are you gonna pit? Low stays out unsurprisingly, but first, third, first, second, and fourth all pit. Smoothie stays out. Dragon has to pit as does Shu in 19, because they all have damage and all that. Waddington and the Hards can stay out, but he will choose to pit instead. Bold strategy, but okay. BTEC 11 and 10th, he will stay out and will likely pick up a few, not a lot, but he will pick up a few positions. Goes up to sixth. Zola coming in now. This means that Kinsey will likely overtake Zola on track and move back into the 11th spot, but he'll be behind Waddington. And that is not a position I would envy right now. Wyington, just the Williams in general, have shown to be borderline impossible to overtake today. And Worsen will catch up to the back of the grid. So we still have 14 drivers somehow. Despite that crazy, pure stupidity crash, that was basically 10 laps in the making. You can't, I understand the idea, hey, I will defend the inside line and make it to where the other driver can't get them, but... You know, you can't just intentionally late break and run your opposition off the line every single time. That time, Torpedo just said, hey, look, I'm not standing for this. He held his lane. The two lines ended up crossing the line that Torpedo was holding and then the line that we saw the Williams hold. And the Williams just ended up walking right into him because he missed the proper corner entry. So because of that, they made contact on exit, he went into the outside wall, and then for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just because of the angle of the impact, or he started backing up, but he ended up right back into the middle of the racing line. And Dragon is the one I really feel bad for, because he ended up having to swerve to avoid, and ended up damaging his own car, and then SFR Shu gets caught in the mess as well. Although for Shu, it honestly worked out for the best, because now he is seventh on Fresh Sauce. The driver right ahead of him is on Born Mediums, and the two drivers up ahead of them mediums and then the two of the three drivers at the front are on worn mediums so Shu now is in the second best tire position track tire position track position scenario of everyone right now and we should be going green relatively shortly here i think we'll probably go green lap 37 so just a bit over halfway because ocean lion is only eight seconds out the back of the grid and he's gonna close in on them fast here And then Zola and Worsen will do the same almost right after it. So we should be going green this coming onto lap 37 here. So a relatively short yellow flag at least. And thankfully, we still have the same 14 drivers we've had for the last dozen or so laps. 
Yep, there's the word safety car officially coming in this lap. So XRL Low now inherits the race lead with the Alpina Smoothie behind him. So Honda and, Al and Renault engine, AlphaTauri and Alpine at the front. And then another AlphaTauri, Honda engine in third, and then a Red Bull Honda engine in fourth. Boy, you want to talk about a stack up low, pulls away, Smoothie immediately falling under threat from Torpedo as we come to the green flag here. Torpedo inside now, he scoots onto the inside, side by side to the corner. Nothing that Smoothie can do, and Torpedo takes home second. Shu loses the position to 19. Waddington trying to get by Dragon, he'll do it. Collie Boy behind Smoothie now. For the Red Bull, just frustration. But now, Kali, for a long term at least, is in a good position when it comes to tires. How aggressively will he try and get by the Alpine? That's the question. Kali Boy dominated the first third of this race, but he's been stuck behind someone else for most of the rest of the running. The shoe loses a position to J Tech. BTEC 11, well, he's stepped behind BTEC 11. Might be able to outdrag him here. Ooh, Ferrari just would not move off the line. She was like, hey, move out, I'm coming, but uh, BTEC knows the racing line. He'll hold it, force Shu to either have to choose between laying on the grass or backing out. Shu wisely chose to back out instead. At the front, AlphaTauri 1-2, low leading Torpedo. As they are pulling from everyone else, Smoothie just not able to keep in touch with the leaders. And Collie Boy again stuck behind a slower car and cannot seem to get by. Good news though, DRS will be kicking in sooner rather than later. And that should work in Collie Boy's favor. Still stuck behind the Ferrari of Jelebin. Gets right underneath his rear wing, but not really able to do anything. Waddington is now there behind them in ninth. And DRS there is enabled, so we'll see DRS get turned on on the back straightaway this lap. Galfing's trying to get by the Ferrari on pure driver skill and ability, but the track is so tight, you can't really do it. It's not quite to the level of Monaco, but it's similar to Hungary, in which without DRS, you can't really make any overtakes, and with DRS, you can only really make overtakes in one and a half areas. But I find this track a lot more in visually engaging and driver engaging than Hungary, so I like this a lot more than Hungary. Someone's gone off. That's the Williams. That's XR, it's 19. Well, that definitely uh, randomizes the grid order, but he actually comes to a dead stop to let the rest of the field by. Good news for 19, no damage by the looks of it, but uh, that could have gone better for them, for sure. No challenge for a lead at the moment, and Smoothie still holds off Collie Boy for a bit longer. They're coming onto the main straight here. Collie Boy has a huge run there. As they're side by side, Torpedo will easily pass low. And for third, a little bit of contact between the Red Bull and the Alpine, but Collie now is, goes into third where he belongs. Well, closer to where he probably feels that he belongs. Jelebin under threat from Shu, but Shu could not make it stick. And now Waddington is going to come by. Or try to come by at least, but he could not make it stick. And Collie Boy, the man who has dominated today's race, has crashed out! Boy is out! Ah!
the humanity! 19 is in pit lane, and this means it looks like it will be Matrix fighting the Alpha Taris for the race win now. Torpedo now leading slow, and Torpedo has soft tires, so he'll probably open up the gap on his teammate. All right, and coming in the party right now is Kali Boy. Kali, go ahead and include your audio. Dominated the first third of the race, uh, and now out of it. What do you have to say? Absolutely gutted. Uh, was having a good race. Uh, just got on the power too early and put it in the wall. Well, sadly, no points today at all for the Red Bull camp. There is still one race left. Monza, do you think you can, you know, kind of pull off this performance without the crashing aspect next week? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, if I race, that's, I'm only, I'm only reserving in realistic this week. But if I race, right, yeah, I'll be looking to do some. Got off to a good start, qualified in P1. Uh, got off to a good start, was leading most of the race. Uh, up to one of the safety, one of the safety cars. When I pitted, sitting P4 there, and the P3 then bend it. Brutal. Alright, well, it's a shame to see you knocked out like this, though. But I will say thanks for being willing to jump in and talk with us, man. Ah, no bother, mate. Catch you Mm-hmm. Alright, that's the word from Collie Boy. We are down to 13 cars on track. Right now, everyone's kind of stuck in a train from 5th on back behind BTEC 11. Although Kinsey has just gotten, is trying to stay ahead of Dragon farther back as Dragon is suffering on his tires. I wonder if he may have damaged or something as well because there's no reason he should be running this slow. But uh, Shu has not been able to get around the Ferrari despite having better tires. Gilebin on the far older and far slower tires has just been able to keep the Alpine behind thus far. Waddington barreling down on the Renault. Worsen around out of the final corner. Here comes ah, Waddington. God, you can't just blow the first corner like that to force the other guy to abort. I understand you're desperate because you think you should be fighting for the win, but Christ alive, that's excessive. Contact, and the Alpine goes up and will drop down the order now. Worsen looks like he got by without damage. Dragon got by Shu, and now it's up to Ocean Line to see what he can do to the Alpine. So now Waddington has his chance on Delevin, and he'll probably make his way past this as well, because he'll just get a lot, if he's good enough coming out of the second to last corner, he'll just use DRS to pull alongside and blow turn one in order to force the Ferrari offline, and Waddington will go up in the fifth. Oh, and 19's out. 19's just crashed out in sector two. And that's a virtual safety car. No, that's a full course safety car. Very dangerous part of the track for that to happen at. But Eleven will take advantage of that to get a free pit stop. But 19 out of the race. So Torpedo leads. Low second. Bit of a hiccup here on the track because the pace car was not able to pick up the leaders. So everyone just has to be really careful overtaking the safety car now. Only 12 cars left on the track now. Who out of the top four pits? I think Matrix and Waddington, fourth and fifth, will probably stay out. But will they be able to make their tires last to the end of this race? I don't think so. The race finish is still 20 laps out. I don't know how confident I'd feel on medium tires with 27 laps of wear on them. Torpedo's staying out. Lowe is staying out. Smoothie is going to come into the pit, so he wants onto a different set of rubber. Matrix now inherits third. Waddington... He's recovering from his accident earlier, and he's already up into the fourth now because he will overtake Smoothie on track. 
Dragon will hit. Ocean Lion, he'll stay out. Zola stays out. Worsen will stay out. And I imagine Jalebin will probably stay out as well because he just got fresh rubber on as the yellow came out. He'll actually probably overtake Dragon for 11th here. So now, just a matter of how long it takes for the field to gather up. Waddington's a good 7 seconds out from Matrix right now. So we're probably not going to go see the green flag until about lap 46. So we'll be going green with about 17 to go in that case. Lion there in seventh. He's now caught the bag. Zola still five and a half seconds roughly off the back of the grid. Real quickly as we look at the telemetry, I think everyone should be good on fuel at this point in the event. Indeed, everyone is good on fuel now. Worsen now catches the back of the grid. Now it's up to these drivers in 10th, 11th, and 12th to do so. Of note, low in second on very worn medium tires. He will I guarantee you'll have to pit again, but he may be waiting on another yellow flag for a chance to throw on some softs to go for to sprint to the end on. Uh, in the same vein, I imagine that Kinsey, uh, well, Ocean Lion 7 also will probably have to change. I think Kinsey and Worsen might be just on the cusp of maybe being able to make it to the end without having to stop again. But those drivers may choose to stop again if they think it gives them a shot at fast slap point. Well, there's only one Williams left in the race, and it's this man here, A. Waddington. And he's running fourth right now. That would be enough for 12 points. While the Alphataris are first and second on the track. That would be 25 and 18. That's 41 points. 41 minus 12, that's 39. So right now, as it stands, it looks like we could walk out of here with Alphatari adding another 39 points to their manufacturer's championship lead. And we'll get you the exact numbers on it. That would be enough to get them a the manufacturer's title a little bit later on, probably post-race, if they finish where they are right now. That, that would significantly help them in their quest to get the manufacturer's championship. When it comes to the driver's championship, though, Matrix is running third. He only needs to walk out here with seven points. He's on route to walk out here with 15, more than double that. So, yeah, unless something happens to Matrix here late, it looks like it's going to be his championship now. Coming to the green flag. 12 drivers lined up. Who has it to the end? Green flag underway. Torpedo, great launch. Immediately pulls away from his teammate. Lowe has to fight with Matrix for a position. Waddington is there as well. How aggressive is Waddington going to be fighting with drivers who are fighting for titles? Ocean Lion shoe fighting for position. Ocean Lion got caught off just a bit. Now Zola goes to the outside, trying to make something happen. Can't make it happen. That's just a way wider line. But he does anyway, because Lion is slow on the throttle. Kinsey Retro, shoe fighting, spatting for fifth. Oh, the Alpine's off. Now drop shoe out of the points. To last position that promotes his teammate Smoothie back into the points paying positions, though. Zola hanging out behind Kinsey on track. Ooh, big, big issue gain on the throttle, though, for Zola. Now this puts him under threat. Promotion line in the Mercedes behind. Alternate lines for 6th, 7th, and 8th out of the final corner. And Shu pit, so he must have taken some sort of damage. It's 
not going great for him, sadly. Points might not be on the table for him today. At the front. Matrix falling slowly out of range from the Alpha Tauri's ahead. Waddington trying to close in on your championship leader. And Zola continues to hound Kinsey for fifth. Ocean Lion behind. DRS now enabled. Where things are going to start getting interesting now. Zola right there behind Kinsey, even without DRS, though. And look at that. Worsen, Jalebin fighting. Worsen has the position, though. Jalebin just could not navigate that final corner on the extreme outside. Matrix struggling to stay within a second of low. So for Zola, the question is just how long will it take for him to get by Kinsey? As Kinsey now gets a time penalty, he is struggling with that Ferrari without a doubt. DRS will be in the McLaren's favor here on the back straightaway. Will that be enough for him to get by? Worsen scoots by Ocean Lion behind now. Drag race for the fifth spot. And Zola gets it. Nothing the Ferrari could do to fight back. Now Worsen puts pressure on Kinsey for sixth. And while Ferrari is having a respectable day in the manufacturer's title fight, with the Alpha Tauri's being 1-2, it's not going to matter much. Ocean Lion pits. Here comes Worsen. He charges to the inside. Easy overtake on Kinsey. Kinsey gets a little bit of a tap from behind from Jalebin now. But Kinsey is on very worn medium tires, and we're anticipating that he will be pitting sooner rather than, well, at some point, probably not sooner rather than later, but later rather than sooner, maybe to go for fastest lap point. Now it's Smoothie25's turn to try and go after them. Something wrong with Ocean Lion. I guess the game might have reset him onto the racetrack or something. Oh, and Torpedo's had an incident! And Torpedo, who was running in the lead, has had an accident, has gone off, fallen to 10th, and that means championship is over because Matrix is second and Low is first. This also brings a little bit more crazy play into the Manufacturer's Championship, but Driver's title is now over in favor of Matrix as long as he keeps it here to the end of this race because Low has a time penalty and will have to pin again. So Matrix is going to walk out of here with the race victory. Unless we have another yellow. And then everyone has to pit. And even then, I think Matrix still has it because he has such a great track position right now. Dragon behind Smoothie, behind the Furries, as Jalebin's now held up by his teammate at this point, but is struggling to get by him. Ferrari drivers taking alternate lines in Sector 2 here. All it seems to be doing is just holding up Jalebin and keeping him from really making a move. In fact, it's actually brought Smoothie up to him in some of these sectors. Ooh, dive bomb! And into the dirt. And uh, I, Dragon will say, thank you, I'll take that. He'll take advantage. Move by. And now Dragon's the one who gets to go after Jalebin. Jalebin just barely in DRS range of the Ferrari ahead, and Dragon's way faster down the straight right now. I think Dragon's gonna be able to drag him. DRS drag race, Dragon up into seventh. 
And now Smoothie completes an overtake on Dleben. So now Dragon sets his sights on Kinsey Retro for fifth. I mean for sixth position. Also considered Kinsey's done a good job pulling on to six for a while. But Dragon is on way better tires and is in a way better car. So I think this will inevitably go in favor of the McLaren. Look at how fast he closes up in sectors one and two. He doesn't make the dive bomb that Gleben did. Obviously he saw what happened when he tried that going into that corner. But he will have DRS and ERS down the straight. Kinsey defending the inside. Dragon on the outside, neck and neck. Kinsey just has the inside line. And it's just the faster way around. Especially when the racing line lets you cut into the outside. Ooh, Kinsey wide though in three. And that sucks Dragon right back under him. lead. Lowe is coming to the pits. And now Matrix it's a cruise to an easy victory for him. 10 seconds ahead of the next highest driver. Oh! Kinsey and Dragon both had a bit of an instant there in the final quarter. Dragon touched the outside wall. He doesn't care. He's diving to the inside. He misses the corner. Now he does what Waddington does and knocks Kinsey offline. Kinsey is not happy with that. He's trying to fight back. laps to the end of this race. Do the top three drivers have tires that will let them go to the end? Ooh, Alpine, Smoothie, right there behind Kinsey, right alongside Kinsey. He's by him, or not. Yes, he is, but barely. Kinsey gets DRS though on the back straightaway here, but Smoothie also has off the McLaren ahead. Torpedo has caught the rear of this group, but has not been able to make any headway getting through them. And Torpedo is on very worn soft tires, and will have to pit sooner rather than later. Now Smoothie is already sucked up behind Dragon for the fifth spot. Ooh, Kinsey lunges under braking. Boy, does he lunge under braking. He's got to move. He's committing to it. Smoothie, Kinsey, Alpine, Ferrari. Alpine holds it for just a bit longer. Now Smoothie dives on Dragon. Forces the McLaren out of the way. Is Dragon's tires falling off? Kinsey on Dragon made contact, nearly spun it, saved it. He's still behind the McLaren. It's a drag race for a position. Dragon crosses over, holds on. Kinsey tries taking an alternate line, can't make it stick. Ocean Lion spins further back. Dragon trying. Oh, Kinsey gets into the back of Dragon there. Is there damage on the McLaren? I think there might be damage on the McLaren. 
Torpedo pits farther behind, trying to get off his old tires. Now Kenzie barrels his way to the inside lane. Dragon doesn't seem to have any way to fight back. And I think Dragon's tires have worn off way more than Kenzie's have at this point. And all this is, while this is happening, Smoothie's like, thank you very much. I'm gonna walk out here with this if I can. That's Torpedo! And Torpedo's out! Championship over! No yellow flags, despite Torpedo's DNF. And now only 11 cars are left fighting for the 10 points paying positions. 11 has a run on his teammate Kinsey. Side by side in the Ferrari camp, and 11 finally gets by Kinsey. All right, and coming in the party right now is XRL Torpedo. Torpedo, include your audio. At one point, it looked like you were in position to walk off with the race win. Now, out of the race, what happened? Walk us through the event from your perspective. Yeah, indeed. You don't normally see a driver go faster in a slower car, but that's been exactly what happened. Game moved to a slower car and then increasing his performance, ability, and a big accident! And Dream Gillipin and, and Dragon both involved in an accident in Sector 3. Somehow that's not a yellow flag. I don't know how the hell that happened, but that's bullcrap. I'm sorry. Anyways, Torpedo, uh, the only other bad news I have right now, it looks like your team's lead in the Manufacturers Championship is going to uh, collapse quite a bit because, oh, and Gillespie now DNFs as well, because both of your team rivals are looking to finish ahead of your teammate right now. So you still have one more championship left to fight for at Monza. Good luck, mate. So a multi-car accident, and somehow we stay green. I don't know how, but we do. And now only nine cars left in the event. Zola fighting with Waddington for second. Kinsey looks like he can still walk out of here in seventh position. Waddington in second. This will be great for Williams' shot at the Manufacturers' Championship. Maybe not enough, but it will be good for them. For XRO Matrix, the championship is won. Now the question for him, can he win this race as well to cap off the season? Winning two of the last three races would be a heck of a way to lock up a title. But this is the most active fight on track right now for second. All right, and coming into coming into the party right now is XRL Dragon. Dragon, go ahead, include your audio. Uh, you are honestly having one of the best runs all season long, and then you get taken out. What looked like no fault of your own. What happened out there? Um, I saw Jeff's back end start to uh, fishtail out. Looked like he uh, looked like he corrected, uh, snapped the car back center, and then just snapped out to the other side. Come into me, just. Put me, uh, put me right into the wall. I'm, I'm not sure if he, uh, I'm not sure if he stayed on the power deliberately trying to, uh, trying to correct the car. 
but unfortunately I got uh, collected back up in that. I think it would have been the more prudent move just to back off the power. Absolute travesty because you were, like I said, you were in route to what looked like maybe your best run of the season. Yeah. At least, it, without a doubt, the best run in the McLaren. An absolute travesty to see that happen. Yeah. Well, I got uh, I got one more race to got one more race to hopefully make a run at this thing. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much going to be curtains on the season. All right. Thanks for being willing to jump in and talk with us. It's a shame to see you knocked out like this, mate. Not a problem. Thank you. All right, no word from Jalevin, so he has not taken the option to jump into the party, it would appear. This fight for third continues, but also there is now a fight for sixth because Lowe has caught Kinsey Retro. He knows that Waddington is out of touch, but Lowe just wants to try and get by at least the Ferrari, make sure the Ferrari is locked as far away out of, cha of manufacturer's championship contention as possible. Maximum 45 points can be earned for a team in a single race. I keep saying 54, but uh, that would be under the assumption that first and second could both earn max points. They can't, they can't both earn 25. That's not actually how it works. 40 points is the most a team could earn in a single race. So for Lowe, he needs to try and make sure that the AlphaTauri stay 40 points ahead of Williams and Ferrari going into the season finale just so they can lock up the manufacturer's title. Ocean Lions pitting out ninth, likely going to try and go for the fastest lap point. We're still 13 laps from the end of this race. You need to complete 90% of the event in order to be classed and earned points right now. Oh, and the Ferrari of Kenzie's off. And that promotes low up into six now. Fight for second continues, but Mr. Worsen in fourth is closing gradually in this fight. Zola has the run on the Williams, goes to the outside. Why is he being a lot more cautious fighting Zola than he was earlier? He's not botching the apex of the hairpin like he had been before. He's taking a much more controlled line. leading Zola still Zola has the advantage of DRS on the straights but Waddington has the cleaner air and that's all it takes really to just stay ahead at this point point. and again everyone here is on worn tires but Zola's been stuck in aerodynamic wake for so long his tires are going to be way worse than Waddington's right now so Waddington is going to come back from a self-inflicted accident to finish second by the looks of it And there is Mr. Worsen a little bit further back. He is gradually closing on this fight. But for Worsen, he's on tires are even worse than the top three. So I don't think he'll be able to make any serious headway either. Ocean Lion sets the fastest lap on those fresh softs. Again, there's still 11 laps to go. I would not be surprised to see Kenzie Retro probably pit in the next five laps to try and go for fast lap point himself. Only one Ferrari, one Williams, one Alpha Tari left in the race. Right now, Wyington looks like he's going to walk here with 18 points. Oh, Kenzie's out! Ah! Well, that 
takes Ferrari out of the Manufacturer's Championship hunt. And now, and then there were eight. And for Ocean Lion, he's going to walk out of here eighth. For finishing eighth, you earn four points. So if Ocean Lion can just make it to the end of this race without crashing, Mercedes will finally break the 100-point barrier that they have not been able to touch all season long. Ocean Lion needs to finish this race. Fight for second continues. Waddington versus Zola. I think, as long as Lowe finishes in six, even if Waddington's going to come home second, I think AlphaTauri will have the Manufacturer's Championship locked up from where they're standing right now. Yeah, yeah, you can see Wyden's being a lot more careful fighting now, and that's giving Zola a shot for second. Here comes Zola on the inside. He'll no, he'll miss it. He puts the power down, slides out from under him. Wyden now has got second for good, because I think with that, I think it just goes to show the tires are just too badly burnt up for Zola. He can't do anything. Even when he's slightly faster than Wyden, he can't do anything with it. He immediately starts closing the gap back down the Williams, but now Worsen is in play as well. trying to close in on Wyington. He has the speed. He has a car to get alongside. But, as but there's only one overtaking opportunity for all intents and purposes. And as long as Wyington denies the inside lane, there is no overtaking that can be done. Now Zola came really close, but the tires is so worn out that it's not possible to make anything stick anywhere else on the track unless you're going to get to someone's inside going down the back straightaway, going down the front straightaway. Now Worsen's already fallen back off of second of this fight for second and third, though. So his tires definitely are cooked. In fact, Smoothie in fifth is actually closing in on him. Smoothie on tires that are 11 laps younger than Worsen and 9 laps younger than your podium drivers right now. But the gap that Matrix has over Washington alone, 13 seconds enough that he guarantees that Smoothie has no chance of getting a podium position. Seven laps to go. Ocean Lion, he needs to finish this lap. If he can finish this lap, he will automatically be scored for finishing 90% of this race. And will take home four points to finally get Mercedes into the triple digits in the Manufacturer's Championship. Day by the looks of it for the Alpine team. 
So Zola just way too am ambitious, too am rambunctious, unbreaking, throws it away. And will likely have to pit to repair wing damage. Lucky he didn't take that car out altogether. Now Smoothie 25 closing in on Mr. Worsen ahead. The fight for the final step on the podium might not be over yet. Worsen is also kind of closing on Waddington, but not at a rate fast enough to make it seem like second is seriously up for play. Closing on Alpha Romeo just a bit through there. Half a second now. So Smoothie now within DRS range. He's going to go for third position without a doubt. Can he take third is the real question. So Zola now has soft tires on and is likely going to try and go for fast slap point. He's also about two seconds ahead of Ocean Line, so he should be able to hold on to seventh at least. Smoothie, he's there. He's going to have about two laps worth of shots down the main straight to try and get by Worsen with some DRS. Barreling down in the straight. Worsen, how does he defend? Doesn't need to. Smoothie couldn't get close enough. There's three laps to go right now. For the final step on the podium, he's the other wild card. Lowe is there in fifth. He'll gladly steal fourth if he thinks he can. Right on board the Alphatari of Lowe. And the way it stands, it looks like Lowe will lock up the Manufacturer's Championship for the team. While Torpedo has absolutely done some heavy lifting, we cannot discount what Lowe has done. Lowe has put together some absolutely incredible races in that Alphatari car this season. And has definitely helped keep that team, it, one of the guys who helped keep that team in a good position. So when Torpedo moved over, the two of them could, together could wrap up the manufacturer's title. So great job on their part. For third position, Smoothie is a little bit closer this time. Alpine versus Alfa Romeo. This is the clo way closer than where they were before. He's right behind. He goes to the outside. Alfa Romeo defends inside. Alpine outside. Easy DRS overtake. Nothing can be done. Can Smoothie get away from Worsen? Because if he gets far enough away from Worsen, then Worsen might be under threat from losing that fourth position to low as well. Letting the Alpine go. Lowe still hangs out behind the duo. Yeah, Worsen's gonna get DRS on Smoothie on the back straightaway here. Oh, big twitch by the Alpha Romeo! Here comes Lowe! Drag race! Alphatari has a nose ahead. Neck and neck, side by side, into the braking zone! And Worsen takes a time penalty, low up in the fourth. Oh, and he's around, he spins. Oh, he saved it, he saved it, but he drops back to fifth, and that will take him out of that fight. So that's it, 
Low will not be able to get back by Worsen then. Well, he will actually, because Worsen has a time penalty. Low does not. So Low is going to get fourth based on time penalties. Farther back, Ocean Lions trying to make something happen to Zola here. But if you can't get him down the front straight away, it's not going to happen, period. Because this will be the last chance for these two to cross the start finish line straight. If Lion can't make the overtake here, he's not going to get by the McLaren, period. He's got DRS right underneath him. Looks to the outside. McLaren inside. Mercedes outside. Easy overtake out by Ocean Lion. But at the front, XRL Matrix has been a dominant force early on and then up the dominance when moved to a slower car. No one has been able to touch him on any sort of consistent basis. He came back from a lap one accident that left him buried in the back of the grid. He has made up every position on track almost and XRL Matrix will come across the line and will take home the white flag. One lap is left for Matrix. Low is going to get one last shot at Mr. Worsen for the fourth position. In the same vein, Zola might have one shot at the Mercedes of Ocean Lion for seventh. Down the main straight once more for a final time. Low is right there behind the Alfa Romeo. He looks to the inside. No way the Alfa Romeo can defend. It's too late. Side by side. Neck and neck. He's by. Is he out? He's out. Worsen is out of fuel! He is the only one! And Ocean Lion is borderline on fuel as well! Ocean Lion has just set the fastest lap of the race. Well, it said Worsen was borderline on fuel. Lion is out! Lion from turned everything up! For that final lap, but he is now out of fuel. But anyways, out of the final corners now comes XRL Matrix. He will come to the line and take home victory here at Sandvoort and lock up your driver's championship for second position. Smoothie has caught Waddington, but it's not going to matter. Waddington with some excessively defensive driving and with supreme confidence in that Williams machine will take home second after an early race accident. Smoothie is going to bring the Alpine home in third. Lowe is going to come home and lock up the manufacturer's championship for AlphaTauri with a fourth place finish. SFR Shoe brings home fifth, a good points day for Alpine. Mr. Worsen out of fuel. I think he's not, I don't I don't know if he's going to make it to the line. Ocean Lion's faster than him. Ocean Lion's faster than him. Ocean Lion's faster than him. He gets into him. And now it's a drag race because that's held up. Ocean Lion up. Ocean Lion will barely hold over Zola and worse and runs out of fuel and will take home eighth position. All right, and coming into the party right now is XRL Matrix. Matrix, go ahead, include your audio. A fantastic win, but first, what happened on the first lap? You had such a great launch off the start, and then got caught in that massive lap one accident. What happened? Um, I think a car clipped me not too, like, not too sure it was, um, and lost my wing. Thought that, I honestly thought I was going to die. Like, I thought, like, that's, this is it. I'm not, I'm not getting into this. Um, rest of the race was good, and then unfortunately torpedo dropped it, and I was shocked. I didn't even think, I didn't even realize who it was until, like, I drove past him. I thought, where did the Alpha Tari go? But, um, no, it was a great race. 17 seconds ahead, so, um, pretty dominant, yeah. Alright, well, Matrix. I'm sure these are the words you've wanted to hear all time. For the first time in Extreme Racing League's history, you are the first driver ever to hold championship for two different tiers within XRL as the defending X2 champion, and you are now officially the Extreme Racing League's Realistic Series champion as well. Outstanding job, mate. Yeah, I enjoyed it, and I, I like this game a lot. As I look back at this game, I think that was a really good game, but... Next year, we'll see what happens, because EA are now in control, so we'll see. Alright, well, 
looking back at this entire season, mate, it's been tw- it's been a 23 race journey. You've missed about a quarter of the uh, not quarter, about about a fifth of the races this season. Walk us through this season, though, from your perspective. Just when was the big turning point that really let you seize control of the championship, in your opinion? I know what I would say it was, but in your opinion, when was the turning point? Getting put in an alpha meal. Oh, you think that was it? Oh, I, I would have said way earlier in this. I, I would have said Japan. Nah, because where did I, where did I finish in Japan? Where even was Japan? I'm looking at it right now, but is it? I mean, oh, at Japan, let me pull up the... Yeah. The torpedo DNF, but I DNF'd in Bahrain. Yeah. So he was actually leading the champion... No, I was, I was. Um, I've missed... I've missed... One, two, three races at I've own choice. And then DNF to two. So I've not finished five. The rest I finished the points. And not only do you finish in the points, you make a habit of finishing very high and very well in the points as well. It's kind of one of those things where it doesn't really matter if you're inconsistent if when every time you're hitting, you're hitting with massive points in your bag. Yeah, first race in the Alfa Romeo was six in Spain. And then including this race, including this race from uh, Baku. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six race in a row now, top three. So... And I didn't get that consistency in Aston Martin. Alright, so one more question, Matrix. One race left in the season. It's Monza. Are you going to show up? And if you show up, are you going to win? Mm, don't know and don't know. Don't know, don't know. We'll see how I feel. <laughs> I was in two thoughts of winning racing tonight because I feel dreadful, but... Um, I just thought I'll just race and see what happens. But yeah, cool. Alright. Well, congratulations, Matrix. You're Extreme Racing League's realistic champion. And now I want to go ahead and talk about the second place finisher, A. Waddington. Waddington, um, a very interesting second place finish, a very controversial race, at least from what I could see. Uh, But in that Williams, I'm going to be honest, of everyone out there on track, you seem to have more confidence in what that car could do than anybody else today. And it seems like that confidence is what really brought home that second position for you. Walk us through the race from your perspective. Well, to add on to what you just said, my confidence definitely took a knock in qualifying. I was feeling miles off at pace, but I knew there were going to be a lot of safety cars. And it was just all about getting that track position and hoping for more safety cars to then save me, which happened. And also evasive driving to avoid everyone that sadly messed up in front of me. I also want to give a shout out to Zola as well. That's that bottle I had with me had me sweating like crazy. <laughs> <coughs> Indeed. All right. So I do want to go ahead and ask this. So I will admit I am a broadcaster. I'm seeing it from a outside of the car camera perspective. To me, at least, it looked like one of the main reasons you were able to lead so many laps and just hold on to a good position today. You had a run. You would get a good run out of the second to last quarter, a braking zone. Carry that momentum all through the final corner, all the way down the straightaway, and even if someone behind you was faster, you would hold the inside lane, and you wouldn't totally botch the corner, but it seemed like you were intentionally missing the apex in yeah. order to force the guy on the outside yeah, I'm to give straight. up and back out. Yeah, force someone to rumble straight, but don't force them off enough that they go into gravel, because I'm not that sort of driver. So I'll always be fair. But if you force someone to that rumble strip on outside turn one, they obviously lose traction, so they have to lift. Well, you did it well. There was one time, obviously, though, that you did it. It didn't work out. You made contact, and you somehow came back from that. What, like, I saw you two make contact, but what was it? Was it just it was a mistake from you? Was the other guy coming down into you? Uh, I think Problem it, putting the power down? What was I, that? I think it was just crap physics, because honestly, it was the slightest tap on my screen, and it just sent him to Narnia. Just sent him into absolute <laughs> realm, into a wall. <laughs> the lion, but, the witch, and the yeah, audacity of these physics. I, I, I don't think any of us did anything wrong. I, I said straight in Pio, like, without my fault, so I, I think Kenzie would be behind us. He goes, I don't even know, or something like that. Right, well, tough. I will say this. I would definitely say controversial, considering at least how, you know, over the last few years, the standards of driving in F1 have gotten really strict, and, you know, denying the apex like that is normally frowned upon, Yeah. but I will also say this, 
that was relatively clever moves that you were pulling off throughout the event in that Williams. I and it was to. interesting I, I, I had to, to do see what you You have that. to do anything possible in these lower end cars. I don't think you actually realize how bad they are to drive. <laughs> they are well, it's not, a, it's not a Haas, mate. And the Williams have already taken home like three, four wins this season. So it's not that bad. Yeah, Frisbee is just cluster his own, though, isn't it? It can drive a wheelbarrow and make it look quick. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, either way, Wyatton, great job, second in the points. Sadly, Manufacturers Championship, though, will be denied to the Williams, despite having a great run near the end of the season, though. But, second place in the Manufacturers Championship, still up for grabs, and it looks like you guys might be in a good position for that. Mm, I'll see if I'm racing. I only step in if someone's not here, and obviously Starfish went here. I'm Ryan. So, I jumped in Williams. But I won't, li I won't like to be in Williams for Monza, no thank you. Because that's on vote bad enough. Hmm. Well, here regardless, I do want to say thanks for being willing to jump in, mate, and talk with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations great job on, on your run today. Matrix. All right. All right, Matrix, one last question, then we'll go ahead and wrap up the broadcast. One last question for you. Uh, if you have the opportunity, are you going to run the number one for next week's race? Uh, uh, no. No. How sad. How pathetic. <laughs> All right. Can I even pick that? All right. I think I can, can I? I'd mm. hope the game would let you. No, it doesn't. Only gives you number two. That's horse crap. Yeah. I don't think it, I didn't think it was an option. Oh. That's crap. No, it's cost you like sure I'll be in career mode. Say that again? Say that again? It lets you be in career mode. Oh does it? Oh no. Yeah, it lets you have number one if you win tile. I've never yeah, got but that, it doesn't so. matter because of the way this works and we have to orchestrate this. Alright, well thanks to both of you. Outstanding yes. race. And we look forward to everyone watching the season finale next week. Although the championship tiles are decided, there are still a little bit of pride and other points on the line. And one more trophy still out for grabs. Next week is the season finale at Monza. But tomorrow, there still is three races. The X1, X2, X3 races. Those all will be taking place at Silverstone. Until next time, though, I've been your host for today's Race Insane Lear. Sign off. I want you for watching. And goodbye.